Hey there, War Gamers, Justin our Painter here, and you guys are tuning in for part four of the Paint Mephiston tutorial series. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in again for part four of the Paint Mephiston tutorial series. I hope you've got your paint brushes and paint ready, even though I haven't told you what paints that we're going to be using today, but I hope you've got everything at arm's reach so that you can start painting alongside me and learning some new techniques. That said, let's go ahead and flip around here and I'll show you guys where we are currently at on Mephiston and talk to you about what we're going to be working on today. If you guys missed the last episode, we spent uh, part three of the Paint Mephiston tutorial series working on his uh, cloak here. I keep calling it robes, but this is what I like to call the robes. This is what I want to call his cloak. And uh, I kept mixing that up during the last video. But in part uh, three, we worked on building up the black cloak as it is. Uh, and in part two, um, we fixed the robes here where I had desaturated them from a washing step. And in part one, we worked on the, uh, the quick airbrushing and the, the masking steps that uh, we did to get it in its current state. With that being said today, we're not gonna be working on Mephiston's body. We're gonna be taking Mephiston and his old backpack here, we're gonna be setting them to the side. Uh, today, we're gonna be focusing on working on his face. In a future uh, video, we're going to uh, target his sword, work on his gloves, the uh, the metallics and the bone colors that need to get done and all the other details on this model. But for now, we're going to set him aside and we're gonna start working on getting the details in on his face. Now to get started with this, we're gonna be using uh, two flesh paints. Now, if you missed episode one, that is when we laid down the flesh colors here and applied a wash. Today, we're gonna be working on the highlights. We're gonna be using two paints for that. We're gonna be using fair highlight and made in flesh. Uh, now this may be a little bit overkill and we'll find out during my process today um, if I really needed both, but I've got them on my palette just in case. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is applying highlights here, just like we did in part three to build up the colors on his, uh, his cloak. We're gonna be building up some quick highlights on his facial features. I think that's gonna be important to tackle and I'm gonna try and do that in a speedy way. With that being said, we're gonna come in here with our Maiden Flesh and start hitting the high points here and applying some highlights. Now I do have this uh, mixed with a little bit of glaze medium as well as water so we get something that's a little bit more on the translucent side and something that we can have a little bit more working time with. I want to kind of get blends here quickly and not have to work too hard. Come in and hit the kind of lower lip there. I remember when you're applying highlights like this you want to leave color behind in the recesses. You're not just trying to like paint over, you're trying to hit the high points. And I chose these brighter colors because in the, the box art, Mephiston is very, very pale. So I wanted to go with some colors that were really going to push his kind of really fair skin. So what better to use than the, the fair colors from Reaper? We've got their Maiden Flesh and Fair Highlight here on our palette and that's what we're working with. Again, some of these, it's just almost two hairs and some air. Just a light touch and a pull with the brush. Again, we're not applying full, uh, full coverage here. Just trying to hit the edges of all the details on his face. It's one thing that I really like about the, uh, the updated models for GW over the years. I love Space Marines. The models look so cool. I really like Tau too, but you know, that, that's a different reason. I like their mecha stuff. All their suits and so forth are really cool. Uh, but over the years, the quality of the model sculpts have just gotten phenomenal. Uh, the detail they're packing into these things and this plastic injection is now ridiculous. You used to expect this really good quality from Forge World and other like resin miniature manufacturers, but uh, the, the amount of things you can cram into detail now with plastic injection is just ridiculous. We're definitely in a golden age of miniatures. Not only just from Games Workshop, which obviously I'm currently working on one of their minis, but just in general, there's so many amazing minis that are out right now and there's so much you can do with Kickstarter and so much the, the indie community can do. We're just getting such cool stuff, honestly. It's a, it's a little bit overwhelming and hard to keep up sometimes, but we definitely have a lot of variety. I'm a firm believer that there's a, much like I feel about video games, there is a miniatures game out there for everyone. You just have to find what you like and your flavor. Even if you're not into tabletops, I think that there probably is something you would like if uh, you knew about it. Just haven't found it yet. That's the way I, the way I feel about it. But I'm the same way with video games. I, uh, I got my fiance into playing some games and uh, it's not something she ever did a whole lot of. And now uh, she doesn't like everything. She actually doesn't even like most of the stuff that I like, if I'm honest. Um, 
but she does play games now and there's something she really has just fallen in love with and I never thought that it would happen she didn't either but I exposed her to some stuff and she she fell in love with playing a handful of games which was uh, really cool so much like that I feel the same way with miniatures there's some kind of game or some kind of mini out there for you just gotta find it it's a lot of a lot of ridiculous stuff going on in the world and I think that losing yourself in minis is a really cool and fun experience I think uh, some people get a little bit uh, kind of apprehensive towards things like this they don't think they can do it or you know the way they were raised it was taboo you know do and do's the devil that type of thing but it truly is a, a great way of expression, express, self-expression and expressing yourself. I really do enjoy it. So now that we've got that application of Maiden Flesh down, it's time to come in with a little bit of the fair highlights and simply hit the brightest points on here. We don't want to apply it all over the place. We don't want to hit all the full areas we just hit. We just want to hit the exaggerated highlights. Let's go ahead and grab some of that on our brush here. So as we come in, with this fair highlight, I'm going to be targeting his chin first. And you'll notice I'm dragging some of this across my my, uh, my knuckle here. I'm trying to get excess paint off and form the tip and just get a little bit on there. So I'm going to come in here, and again, this is some really, really thin down paint. Just kind of dab in here to hit his little butt chin. I want to get that, that highlight on there. And you could skip some of this uh, if you were happy with where the flesh was from part one and you just want to do some uh, some speed painting and get a decent um, tabletop plus standard, you might even be able to skip the highlights because the wash step uh, brought the details so well. Or you could have stopped after the first highlight instead of doing the secondary one. Uh, it really depends on what it is you want to get out of your miniature. And uh, because I'm not very good at playing and I don't get to play much, I find myself focusing uh, very heavily on cool painted minis and um, applying detail, at least from my skill set. Um, because I don't get to play much. So I can focus on this and uh, when I can't focus on gaming, which honestly, uh, I'm not very good at. I'm not a very good 40K player. I wasn't too bad at War Machine uh, when that was a bit more popular. That was a bit more my style. I like the 40K universe better. I like the rule set for War Machine better. Um, that's not because I'm like some uh, what it all costs kind of guy. I just felt like for the competitive players we had locally, the rule set for War Machine uh, worked better for uh, for everyone involved. Um, if you were uh, new to the game, uh, I feel like uh, there was still a learning curve, but uh, it was a bit more forgiving because you knew um, what you there were win conditions for you, and you know, given the rule set, there were certain things that you just you got used to. In 40k, I just feel like it's different. That could be me. Everyone may have different uh, opinions and so forth, and that is completely fine, but uh, I get different things out of 40k than I get out of other miniatures games, and I think that is due in part to the rules, and also because I really like their fluff. I'm way more interested in uh, creating a cool narrative with my 40k armies and uh, when I play with people than I am simply trying to win some tournament. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a tournament playing 40k player, um, but do I want to forge a, a really cool narrative? Uh, you betcha. That is definitely something that I like to do. It's a lot of fun for me. Nothing screams uh, fun hobby, you know, fluffy stuff to me like grabbing uh, some, a 40k army and sitting down across from someone else who's putting some uh, awesome paint time into their army. And they don't they don't have to be gold demon worthy. It's it's just your effort that's important to me. Does it look good from how much time you were able to spend in it and and what your skill set is? You know, I've played with people who are very new and their paint skills are still developing. I paint with people who have really good painted models. It just depends on where you come from. But for me, it just has a lot to do with effort. And if you've put in effort, I notice, and it makes the, the gameplay experience more fun for me. And I also feel like our armies are clashing. We're creating a story on the table. That is something that I like. Not many other games, I feel, give that same experience or feeling to me. Now, I think after applying that uh, secondary highlight there, we're getting something a bit more uh, on the pale side, the kind of really light fair skin side, which is what he's got in the photo. Now ours is uh, still a little bit darker, but it is very bright. Like compared to my skin tone, it's very bright. Like that one's way brighter. 
but I think this is looking really, really nice. So from here, it's time to come in and apply the white to the eyes and the teeth and get a little bit of color into his mouth on his tongue area here. To start things off with that, I think we're gonna target the tongue first. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to get to and then it's not gonna interfere with the white as much. So for that, I'm gonna come in and I'm going to use a little bit of Screamer Pink. We will not need a whole lot of this because uh, it's just a very, very small area. So we're gonna thin this down and I get this on my wet palette here. Just need a little dibble dab. I'm not even gonna put the, the full um, water droplet I would in here to thin it. We just need enough to get in there and basically paint his tongue. That's what we're trying to do. So I'm gonna grab that Screamer Pink, and ever so gently come in here and paint just a little bit right there on his, his tongue. Won't take much, but I'm trying to be very cautious with this because I don't wanna hit any of that flesh and mess that up. Better to paint slow and not make mistakes than to rush it and screw anything up. And I'm kind of pushing the, uh, the paint down into the recess there a little bit more because I want to make sure that the whole kind of uh, recess of his mouth there has got a pink tint. So we're going to allow that to dry and then we're going to come in with a little bit of Kerberg Crimson and tint the whole inside of his mouth here uh, like that reddish color. It's going to look really great. So I've got my Kerberg Crimson here popped open. I've swapped brushes to something a little bit bigger. I don't apply washes with my sable brushes very often, but when I'm dealing with something like this, I will use one of my sable brushes. Yeah, I will use one of my sable brushes, Enunciate, to get in there and just get a nice targeted wash. Don't want it everywhere, just one in his mouth. And again, this is why we did the, uh, the pink portion first before his teeth, because this right here would have really ruined white teeth that we had in there. But I'm gonna get the whole kind of area of his mouth where his teeth would be is perfectly fine. Just don't want to hit anything else. And the good thing about this is that it's going to kind of give the illusion that he's got gums when we come in, at least on the bottom side right next to his lip, and apply that white. It's going to have a little bit of pink next to it. Right now it looks like we've given him a fist on some lipstick, but I promise it's not going to look ridiculous for long. With the wash now dry, we're going to grab just a little bit, just a little tad of pink horror. So we use Screamer Pink first, washed it with Kerber Crimson, and now we're gonna come in here with a little bit of pink horror, and we're going to try and highlight the very edge of his tongue here. Won't take much here, just want a little dab. That was a little bit more than I wanted, so clean off my brush here and we're going to come into kind of where it was too much and start to sop that off. That's not coming off well and this is the downside to trying to work on fine details so we're going to come back in a little bit of that pink car and we're going to try and tone down the pink. kind of wanted the tip of his tongue to have a little highlight on it. I think that has worked out reasonably well. It looks like a little bit of a hot mess but it will not once we get his teeth done. So while that is drying we're going to go ahead and get our white prepped and we can work on his eyes and his teeth. For the white colors, we're going to come in with a little bit of Windsor & Newton Professional Acrylic Titanium White. I like to use this for white over the Citadel Whites because I find that it just it blends a lot better, it, it thins down a lot better, and it's not quite as chalky. But if you've got a white you prefer, perhaps Vallejo, or maybe you do like the Citadel, feel free to use that. So we're going to come in here and load up our paintbrush with our white. And we're going to hit this guy's eye sockets, or eyes rather. Right Go slow, kind of dab, pull out. You don't want to go crazy. You want to have bright eye. I think that turned out pretty well. Now we'll come in here and we're going to hit his teeth. Again, we want to hit the top portion of the teeth here. We don't want to hit his lip and we don't want to get full coverage because we want that dark line between the teeth and the lip. It's going to be a little tricky, but just practice. And we'll see if I can actually achieve what it is I'm trying to achieve as well. You can see I kind of lifted there as I painted the top row instead of going all the way across so that I could leave a little bit of a dark line there and kind of give the illusion that he's got bangs. Now it's going to be a little bit more tricky getting the bottom side here. We're going to see what we can do. As I've said before, go slow and be patient. 
better to do that and take a little extra time than to try and rush it and then actually lose time trying to have to fix a mistake. Spend a little bit more time now than more time fixing a mistake later. Sometimes I say stuff that makes sense. Sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. So this can be a little tricky to, to get that te the teeth there done. And I have messed up. Um, it was a little hard for me to get the, the angle right and see uh, where the line of teeth were. So we're gonna try and tighten this up a little bit here. And salvage the, the teeth. I might not have messed up quite as bad as I thought I did. Yeah, see, uh, when I said I messed up, I feel like we've lost the, the line, the differentiation between his bottom lip and his teeth there. So let's come back in with a little bit of that um, screamer pink here and see if we can't do a quick uh, quick black line, so to speak, try and fix that up. Here I am saying don't rush and don't make more work for yourself later. And I don't feel like I rushed, but I definitely, definitely messed up. Go ahead and tidy up that bottom lip. Like I said, we really wanted to keep that little bit of screamer pink in the recess there because it was going to look like his gums, so to speak. And you could try and black line this too. That probably wouldn't be terrible, but that's not the look I was going for. And now that we've kind of fixed that lip, let's come back in here and try as best we can to tidy up the teeth just a little. Got those top teeth fine. They were a lot easier given the angle I feel. But I think I think that's not too bad. Let's let's bring this back side in just a little bit. Just a little dab. There we go. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get those teeth. That's looking fine. And I am going to come in here and do something a little different though. And you guys might not have expected this. We're going to take a little bit of this white. We've got them now. We're actually going to put a uh, little bit of a highlight on the top of his snarl here. And we're going to put a little bit on his cheek. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, Make, exaggerate this one a little bit more, get a little bit more intense. here and get that underside of it. Well, under his eye, right by the cheek a little bit better. So we've got the white applied to his eyes now. We've got a little bit of a highlight on his cheeks and his snarl, his teeth and his mouth done. We have to allow this to dry and then we're gonna come in with another color here and apply a glow. That's exactly why we got those highlights on his cheeks because we want those to be a little bit brighter. So let's give this guy a moment to dry and then we'll tackle that. With the white area is now dry, it's time to mix the paints for the glow. For the glow, we're going to be using Tenebrous Blue from Green Stuff World, their Intensity Ink. And we're going to be using Veritas Green, also one of their Intensity Inks. And we're going to put one drop of this to one drop of this, one part water, and one part um, glazed medium. The end result is going to be a mix that looks like this, very kind of blue plasma-y look. And we're going to come in and we're going to apply this into his eye socket and a little bit over his cheek and his snarl and we're gonna have to be really careful we don't want to overdo it and we also want to move quickly so that if we need to blend it in we can do so before it starts to set and stain too much so get a little bit on our brush here come in hit those eyes all right now i'm going to feather this out a little bit while it's still wet pull that down a little bit on the side of his nose as well. There we go. Come in on the other side, do the same thing. Gonna get a little bit less this time. The first time I had a lot on there. Make sure we hit the top of that snarl, his cheek, his 
side of his nose. I clean my paintbrush. Come in and kind of feather that down. You can see why I wanted to make sure that we applied this quickly and we uh, feathered it because it is intense. And it looks like the uh, left eye is not quite as intense as the right. So we'll come back in with a little bit more. There we go. Got the areas covered. And we'll feather that out. Okay. And I was a little bit too cautious on this side. I was worried too much that I was going to overdo it, that it didn't do enough. So, but as I've said before, you can always come back in and add more paint. You can't add less, so best to build up colors and get where you want to be than to mess up. Once our ink here is dry, we're going to come back in here with a little bit more of that white. and We're going to hit the centers of his eyes one more time just to make them look like the hottest spot on his face. Look like they're really, really glowing. There we go. And I've got this really thinned down so that it's kind of going on a little bit more translucent. There we go. I feel like his, uh, his other eye needs to be a little bit more intense. So we'll come back in, we'll add a little bit more to the center there. Come in and we're gonna apply just a little hint to the top of his cheek here. Or a snarl rather. Gonna hit just the top portion of his cheek. Really kind of give the illusion that this is really, really bright. That's what we want. We want a very bright kind of force psyker glow coming out of Mephiston's eyes here. I think it's gonna be really, really cool. So now we've got his eyes complete, the flesh here has been highlighted, his teeth and his mouth are done. The next thing here that we need to do to complete Mephiston's head is to do his hair. We gotta paint his hair. Mephiston's gotta have his, a do, right? Got, gotta look cool. I gotta look cool. If I'm gonna need the Blood Angels, Justin, I gotta have some hair. <laughs> so for that, we're gonna come in and we're gonna start off by laying down some Sahara Yellow from Scale 75. And then we're gonna come in with some of our Lilith Yellow from Scale 75 as well. And then when I've mixed Lilith Yellow with some model color ivory to get a much brighter highlight. So let's go ahead and get that uh, Sahara down first. Again, we're gonna try not to hit any of the flesh here. We don't want to do that. That would not be ideal. Mess up all that work that we've just done. It took two coats of our Sahara Yellow here to get full coverage. But that is now dry and now we can come in with our Lilith yellow with uh, a bit of a, some of these areas we're gonna kind of do an overbrush. Some of it was gonna be real quick, almost edge highlights, but we're not trying to go super crazy here. We're gonna come in later and enhance this, uh, but we just wanna get some highlights on here to begin with because we're gonna wash it so that those recesses are dark. But I feel that if we wash it uh, um, with this quick overbrush slash uh, kind of sort of highlight uh, on here, uh, with a Lilith, Lilith yellow, uh, we're going to get a better transition in color and then we can come in and actually do formal highlights and really get a, a nice transition or gradient in this guy's hair, which is what we want. This is an HQ. We want him to stand out on the table. So we're spending that extra time working on his details. Up here at the top of his head, we might pay a little bit more attention to the actual hair and not just do straight overbrushing because we want to keep more of the, uh, the recess color there. Don't want to cover it all up. You'll notice I've switched between brushes as well. When I'm doing like heavy applications of paint, I'll, uh, I'll grab some of my brushes that are a little bit more expendable. And when I'm working on extreme detail, I'll grab brushes that are more suitable for the job. In this particular case, I've got a slow fuse bomb wick that I like. It's really good for the price. I find these to be really nice. They're really good for detail as well, but I've beat the crap out of this one. So I use it a little bit more uh, frequently now than I did before, because it is one of my go-to brushes um, for applying effects like this quickly. So we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come in for a wash. 
Up next, we're gonna go ahead and apply that wash to his hair. For that, we're gonna be using Agrax Earthshade. Now, I have thinned this Agrax Earthshade down. There are four drops of Agrax in here to one drop of Flow Improver and one drop of uh, matte varnish from Liquitex. You could use some uh, limeade medium instead if you want, but I find the, the uh, matte varnish from Liquitex works very similar to limeade medium and you get way more of it for the value. So that being said, we're gonna come in here and apply this wash. Again, we, uh, we don't wanna to touch the face. If we can help it, we wanna get right up next to it, but we don't wanna mess up any of those crisp details that we worked so hard to get. So we're gonna apply this very generously to all of his hair here. You can see where we're getting that transition from uh, the, uh, the Sahara and the Lilith, and we're getting the dark brownish kind of tan color in the recesses, which is exactly what we wanted. If you're curious about what Flow Improver I used, I'm using Flow Improver from Reaper. I really enjoy their flesh paints and their drying retarder, Flow Improver, things of that nature are really nice. Also, if you're American based or I live in the States, that's an American company too. So based out of Texas, so if you want to support an American company that makes paints that are actually uh, good for miniatures, can't go wrong with Reaper. That said, I, uh, I do use a lot of Citadel. I lose a lot of, lose a lot of, I lose a lot of it too. Uh, I use a lot of uh, Scale 75 as well as Vallejo. Uh, and those are not stateside, but they're perfectly good paints. But some people uh, are also really conscious about supporting uh, local businesses and uh, country businesses. So that's something you want to do. Pick up some Reaper. Pretty good stuff. And we had the, the wash get a little bit crazy here on his cheeks. I'm just coming while it's still wet and just kind of feather that off. That's why you work quickly with the washes so that you have time to adapt to them while they're they're setting up. If you do this and then you let them dry and you try and get it off, it's, uh, it's nigh impossible. Nigh impossible! Every time I say nigh, I think Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye, Mephiston Glowing Eye Guy. <laughs> All right, so enough uh, silliness. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let that wash dry and then we can come in here and start highlighting up his hair. All right, so now it's time to come in with our Lilith Yellow one more time and in a more targeted way, start hitting those hair uh, strands for highlights. I'm not gonna be doing straight up overbrushing. We wanna be a little bit more precise here. And again, we don't wanna cover up everything because we want some of what we uh, applied before to still be there for the depth and the transitions. That's why we're building up the hair. You could skip this step if you're happy with the way it looks. Perhaps you just want to lay down one color and hit it with a wash. That could be perfectly acceptable. In this case, I do want to build up the paint and the hair because I think it's going to look nice. Some of the hair on the back though, you could probably skip doing crazy detail on because it's probably not going to be seen as much. So I'm going to be focusing on getting it to to a state that looks pretty good and then we'll focus on the, the secondary highlights on the hairs that are going to be on the front and more noticeable. Who says painting details we can't also try and do them speedily right and that's coming from someone who paints real slow so take that with a grain of blood angel size salt because I'm a real slow painter. Everyone from Twitch land who knows me there has been watching me for almost three years now and they know that I paint real slow. You've been painting there for three years and you're just now trying to get back on YouTube? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been around a bit doing different things. Currently work full time for DRD and I stream uh, 20 plus hours a week trying to keep up with content here on YouTube as well, doing stuff, helping support the, or, or give back to the patron supporters who support what I do. That's how this uh, video series was funded. Um, but I was trying to do YouTube stuff in the past and I just, I got real busy with life. You know, you guys know that happens sometimes. School, college, uh, you know, fiancés and dates and, you know, life, life happens. Uh, but, uh, because I'm trying to make this a uh, more, uh, more, uh, integrated portion of my life, something that's a mainstay and part of what I do, not only for fun, but also kind of a business type thing. I'm trying to, to give it more of a solid effort. I got the equipment, I got the, uh, the software, it's just a matter of trying to trying to put it to good use and hopefully these are easy enough to follow. We'll see how the feedback to these uh, this Mephiston series goes. So if you guys have any critiques or suggestions, feel free to sound off in the comments below. I want to make sure that the content I'm putting out is something that you enjoy. And if you uh, like it and I can do it better, I want to know. 
if uh, you like it and you just want me to see me do different stuff I also want to know like give me your thoughts let me know let me know what you think so we're gonna come in here and try and be pretty precise with the hair up at the front because these are the the focal point the much nicer area that people are going to notice so make sure we a little bit more precise and we leave some of that dark color in the recesses there we don't want to cover all that up if you do it's not too big a deal you can just come back in with a little bit of wash and uh, kind of target that area and fix it but better to try and mitigate that problem from the start All right, and with that initial highlight now applied, it's time to come in with our Lilith Yellow mixed with our Ivory from Model Color, Vallejo Model Color. Now this particular color is gonna be a bit brighter. So again, we're gonna be focusing on the extreme highlights here or the secondary highlights, whatever you might wanna call them, and leave some of that other color showing through. And you can really build this up as much as you want. It just depends on how thin um, you go with your, your highlights and your layer buildup. But I generally find that doing a, a two-stage highlight, as I like to call it, it's probably a more technical term, but I've always called it two-stage. So two-stage or secondary highlight. Uh, I find that doing two of them is a, a pretty good happy medium. So we're coming here, hitting all my fist on the Goldilocks the blonde vampire that he's definitely not. He's out seeking werewolf revenge. I've got to take them out, Justin. The werewolves are my natural born enemy. Are you talking about dark angels again, Mephiston? No, no, I would never do that. We don't know anything about the dark angels. Cyborg to the face. Pew. And this, my friends, is why in real life, I'm a moron, but it might be entertaining, and that's what I try to do. That's what I try to do. This can be a little tedious, so like I said before, you know, you can stop at any point. If you like how your model's looking, go with it. You don't have to do exactly what anyone does. My video or any other video you watch or classes you take. Put those tools in your tool chest to develop your own technique, your own style, and do what looks good for you. I'm really interested in learning from uh, a couple of artists. I'd like to take a class with Sam Lins at some point. Um, we'll see if that ever happens, but I follow him and I follow Angel Corolla days very closely on uh, social media. And uh, I really like both of them, different styles, very different styles. And the thing I really like about Sam is he does really cool stuff. Uh, and he doesn't like, he's, he's not like, there's no real gimmick with his tools. He just, he's just got, you know, natural talent, right? Um, which, you know, as Bob Ross would say, anything you're willing to, to practice, you can do, you know, talents and acquired or pursued interest. Um, so I think anything a professional artist does is something that, uh, anyone can do with practice, but Sam in particular, you know, with, you don't see him on there a lot with like ultra expensive airbrushes and, and paint brushes and stuff. He's just, he'll, he'll grab a, a 10 cent brush from the store and he can do wonders with it. You know, I really, I really envy that capability i don't think the tools uh, make the artist but they do help and in his case like he doesn't even need those you know he's just fantastic so we all have hobby inspiration and idols i think and if you don't perhaps you'll follow some of my stuff or you'll uh follow some of the artists i've mentioned or both and get some hobby inspiration some hobby motivation and some artists that you look up to yourself if you're watching this uh, video and enjoying it, we may have similar tastes or you may like what I do, so perhaps you'll actually like the artists I like, so check them out. Alright, so I'm really digging how that is looking so far. I'm debating on if I want to come in for a bit more of an extreme. In the, uh, the GW one, his hair is very, very bright. So I'm debating on if I want to come in and uh, actually apply almost straight ivory. Because in his, his hair in the photo, it's almost almost straight white it's very 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 yellow so i think we might come in with this mixed with just barely 
barely a hint of yellow. So we've got our new mix here. We're gonna do one last highlight. I'm sitting here talking about doing two, and here I am doing a third, but this just wasn't quite as intense as I wanted it to be. I really want some of those high spots to be very bright. I did not find them to be quite as bright as I wanted. That's the beauty of painting. Again, as I said before, you can always go in and add more paint. You can't add less. So build up your colors until you're happy with where you're at. And as one final step here, I'm going to come back in with that wash that we mixed before. And we're just going to push some of the recesses just a little bit more so we get a little bit more separation here. Particularly the areas right up next to the flesh. Really want to make sure that we've got that separation between the flesh and the hair. It also helps kind of tie the colors we've laid down together. He almost has like a, a Thor hairdo going or a Thor hair color going. And uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not totally against that. Thor's a pretty cool character. Sometimes. <laughs> I say that and any of you guys who are uh, familiar with me from Twitch, you know that I, it's not my favorite superhero. But Thor Ragnarok was pretty dope. We'll give them that. Actually, like, Thor Ragnarok and beyond, Thor was cool in the movies. Um, pre that, not my favorite character. Just found him a little bit pretentious. Did not like him. I say that, but I liked Doctor Strange and I liked Tony Stark, which also kind of pretentious, but I don't know. We like what we like, right? That's what I like. So on that note, all we gotta do is let that wash dry. I think we're gonna call that face done. I think the golden yellow locks of Mephiston's hair and the blue glowing eyes are going to go really well with this bright red and dark black that we've got on the model. And I think these, uh, these colors are going to juxtapose very nicely and that model is coming together super awesome. I'm really excited about the way this looks. This is actually my first time doing glowing eyes on a space marine or any marine and uh, well on eyes not actual lenses i showed the the preview that i did the the test mini that i did on uh, on stream the other day i worked on this guy's glowing helmet right and i think for my first attempt on actual eyes on a librarian to make those glow i think that turned out pretty nicely i'm really excited with where this tutorial is going hopefully it's been easy enough for you guys to follow again if you have any thoughts concerns make sure you sign off in the comments below. If you're following along and you've got an Instagram, I'd love to see photos of what you're working on, or if you're just taking these techniques and working on a different model other than Mephiston, share with us, let us know. If you want to go a step above and beyond, I encourage you to check out our Discord and Facebook communities. Links will be in the description below, where you can hang out with like-minded hobbyists like yourself and, and myself, and uh, share your hobby progress with us, play some video games, maybe hang out during a stream, or talk about upcoming miniature releases and rules. I'd like to thank you guys for coming along with me on this painting journey so far. I've had a blast. Uh, this is part four of the Paint Mephiston tutorial series, and I hope it's been easy enough to follow. Uh, there's been a trend here in the last couple of videos where I've talked about that a bit. Um, I may or may not want to get some feedback from you guys. So if this is something that's easy enough to follow, if the format is good or if it's bad, you're not easy to follow, any thoughts or concerns, anything at all, sound off in the comments below. As I just mentioned before, if you're interested in sharing your work with us, show us some links to your Instagram, some photos of your pictures are welcome. We'd love to see those. And if you want to go a step further, we really highly recommend you check out the Tap Garrison, our Facebook and Discord communities where you can hang out with like-minded individuals, people who enjoy playing the game, but even more so enjoy painting and the narrative just as much, if not more. So we'd love to have you a part to be a part of our group. We're almost 500 strong and we would love to welcome you in so you can be a part of our community. If you enjoyed this video, and if you're on part four, you have to enjoy, have to have enjoyed something, make sure you smash that subscribe button, ding the little bell so you get alerts when I put up new content and like this video. If you want to help support the channel, check out deathredesigns.com. That's where I work uh, my, my day job, 40 hours a week. 40? 40, 40, 40, I can't do that, 40 hours a week. Uh, and if you use coupon code GETAMPS10, you'll save 10%, and a portion of those sales will be given to me in the form of a bonus, which is great because it helps me pay bills, helps keep the lights on, and allows me to uh, secure hobby materials, paints, tools, models, and stuff so I can continue to produce content for you guys, which I love to do. If you want to be a super supporter, I encourage you to check out my Patreon page. Uh, we've got pledges for um, for everyone from uh, large to small, and all of your contributions, however big or large they may be, really do help. This video uh, series I've been working on could not have happened without Patreon. Uh, specifically, this video has been sponsored by Wheels, uh, Chris Oaks from the Garrison, one of my longtime friends and supporters, and this video is for him. Not only that, this is his Patreon uh, reward mini for January, so uh, I, I'm painting a mini, and there's a tutorial that he's funded, so kind of a double whammy, and you guys 
besides uh, helping support me and also checking out Death for Designs helps kind of keep me employed twice, sort of, because I get to continue producing content here, which again, I love to do, and also keeps the business going that helps really pay the bills. So I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I can't wait to finish the series and really uh, collect my thoughts, see how I felt about it, see how you guys felt about it, and um, reassess how I want to approach doing tutorials in the future. Maybe we do a mixture of these um, segmented ones and maybe long ones, like uh, kind of like a, a video, um, course or class like the the uh, December one was like an hour and a half hour and 40 minutes whatever this one is however many by the time I'm done um, episodic type things and I think by the end they're gonna be a lot more uh, fleshed out as I've gotten uh, comfortable uh, filming them but we'll have to see so we'll see how the formatting goes and hopefully as the year progresses I'll be able to do more tutorials more unboxing videos more uh, product reviews and um, hopefully hopefully more battle reports I'm really excited to do that but on that note, folks, we're going to go ahead and wrap up today. As always, I hope you're having an awesome week. I hope you enjoyed this video. But keep painting those models, keep rolling those dice, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.